Hi everyone, uh, I'm Louie and I'm an engineer on the Android Toolkit team. Uh, today I'm going to be sharing some best practices when using the Android X preference library, part of Jetpack. I'm going to be covering some background behind preferences and try to clear up any confusion between preferences and shared preferences. I'll demonstrate how to build a setting screen and some useful features you can use along the way. Uh, and I'm going to cover how you can use multiple setting screens, uh, which is especially useful if you're migrating your existing architecture to the Android X library. But first, some background. What are preferences? Um, the preference library is a framework for building interactive setting screens. It handles building and updating the UI, so all you need to do is to find a list of settings to be displayed to the user. And it also handles interacting with device storage so that, all, so that any value that the user changes will ultimately get persisted to the device without you having to worry about it. Um, preferences itself currently exists in two separate forms. Uh, first, the framework preference API. Um, this has been bundled with the Android framework since the first version of Android, so 11 years ago now. Uh, since it is part of the framework, any new features and bug fixes we add only make their way to the newer versions of Android. Um, and given that the design has changed a lot over the last 11 years as well, uh, the framework API is themed differently depending on which version of Android the device is running on. Uh, as a result of these, we're no longer maintaining the framework API, and instead we recommend using the Android X library. The Android X preference library, uh, previously known as the V7 and V14 preference support libraries, uh, is unbundled from the framework. Um, this means it can be rapidly updated with any new features and bug fixes we push. Uh, the library itself is backwards compatible down to API 14 and uses the same updated material theme across all your devices. This results in a consistent experience for your users. And how does this all relate to shared preferences, you may be wondering? Um, the shared preference APIs allow you to persist key value pairs of data to the device. They're used internally by the preference library to save and retrieve any values that a user configures, but aren't actually part of the library itself, just a lower layer. Uh, so let's start building our settings screen. Um, we're going to start off by building the simple hierarchy on the right. Uh, we have a preference with a switch that allows the user to toggle state, and a preference that just displays text. I'm going to cover how you should structure your architecture and also some basic attributes you should be aware of when you're using the preference library. So we're going to start at the top with a simple activity that just acts as a container for our hierarchy. Um, this should be an app-compat activity uh, with an app-compat-based theme. Uh, the activity itself is basically just a container for this preference fragment compat, which is the main entry point when using the preference library. All our interesting uh, preferences and configuration will happen in here. And this fragment itself just wraps a hierarchy of individual preferences, which can either be defined in an XML resource or defined programmatically at runtime. Um, in this talk, we're going to focus on XML. So the activity itself is, again, just a simple container for our fragment. So we just have some simple fragment boilerplate, and all we need to do here is just show our settings fragment. The fragment, again, fairly simple. All you need to do is override this one method on create preferences, and then just set up the hierarchy that you're going to inflate and show to the user. All the interesting definition actually happens in the XML. So this is our XML file. Um, we start with a root preference screen object, and this basically is the main container for the entire hierarchy. Everything should go inside of this, and this should be the root element. Um, note that you should also place your preference XML resource files in the res XML directory. So now we can add our first preference. Um, this is a basic preference. It doesn't have anything, uh, any widget associated with it. Um, and we have these three important attributes here. Uh, the title and the summary are the visual title and the visual summary actually displayed to the user on the screen, as you can see on the right. Um, and the key is pretty important for two reasons. Firstly, if this preference were to persist any state to the device, then this is the key that the shared preference instance would use. And also, this key allows you to interact with this preference later on in your life cycle. So it's very important to declare a key for every preference in your hierarchy. Um, and now we can add a switch preference compat. This is a type of preference, very similar to before, but now we have a switch widget. Um, so whenever the user toggles a state of this preference, this will update the Boolean value persisted to the key defined here. Now that we've built this simple hierarchy, I'll show you some other useful features we can add to make this even better. Here's the hierarchy we're going to end up with. Um, there's quite a lot more going on here, so we're going to take it step by step. Uh, first, I'm going to cover categories, which allow you to visually split up a complex screen into groups of similar preferences. Then preferences that open dialogues, uh, which allow for more complex configuration than just a simple Boolean switch. I'm going to talk a bit about dynamic summaries and also cover dependencies. So continuing from where we left off before, uh, these are the same preferences had before, just without the root preference screen tag for um, verbosity. Uh, 
Uh, one of these controls syncing, and one just stays displays static information about the application. Although this is kind of simple now, there's only two things in the hierarchy, the more we add to this hierarchy, the harder it's going to be for a user to actually see what preference does what. Um, we can use preference categories to help separate this up into logical subsections. To do this, we simply wrap these preference objects with a preference category tag. And as you can see, this now adds an accented title above these groups. Again, it's important to set a key and, um, for these, so it will be persi correctly persistent state. Um, and the title, again, same as before, same attribute, just displayed slightly differently. Um, next, we're going to add an edit text preference, uh, similar to a switch preference compat in that it's a subset of a preference. Uh, this preference uses a dialog to allow persisting a string value. So when the user taps on this preference, we automatically open a dialog for you, which contains an editable text field. And when the user taps on OK, this value is then persisted. However, this gives us some interesting question. Uh, what do we set for the summary here? Um, right now, there's no summary, so it's quite hard for the user to see what the current state is. Um, and we would like to show the user what they've actually saved so they know what they've done. Um, but since this can change dynamically at runtime, we can't just put a string here. Um, the answer here is to use a simple summary provider. Um, this is added recently in the 1.1 alpha release. Um, and it's part of a broad category of things we call dynamic summaries. Um, I'll cover more about that later on. But this simple attribute, when set to true, will mean that the preference summary will automatically display either the value saved for the preference or the text not set if there isn't any value set. Um, so now we have a way for the user to set a sync code, and they can see that the value they've set automatically. However, um, there's one problem here. It doesn't really make much sense for the user to be able to change this field um, if syncing actually isn't enabled. Uh, we can use a dependency here to fix that. Um, essentially, setting a dependency allows another preference to control the state of this preference. Um, so we set the key of the switch preference compat that will control this preference. So this means that whenever the switch preference is turned off, as it is here, the actual preference is grayed out and can no longer be interacted with. And when the switch is turned on, the preference returns to normal and can be interacted with. Um, our hierarchy is almost complete from the example that we gave. Um, the only thing we'd now like to do is set a useful summary for the switch. Um, right now, enable periodic syncing is on, but what does that actually mean? Have we synced recently? Maybe there's a problem connecting to the server. Um, so we can use a custom dynamic summary here to display to the user when we've last synced, providing some more useful context. Um, in general, dynamic summaries are useful in two sort of broad scenarios. Um, firstly, if you'd like to provide the user with more context but tied to specific preference and what it means. So in this case, we'd like to tell them when we've last synced the device. Um, or it can also be useful if you'd like to display some dynamic information. Uh, this could be something like a version information of your application, or even user information such as a specific ID or email address. To set a dynamic summary, we use the uh, summary provider interface. We can use this to either react to the internal state of the preference, or just use it as a callback to generate our own dynamic summary for external state. Uh, here we set the type as switch preference compat, and that is the type of preference that we're setting the summary for. When the preference is checked, in other words, when syncing is enabled, we want to just display the last time we successfully synced. Um, and otherwise, we're just going to say it's disabled, so it's clear to the user. Um, and this is all there really is to it. All we need to do now is just set this on the preference. So to do that, we call find preference using the key we previously assigned in the um, XML. Um, and then we just set the summary provider. This and any other similar configuration should be done in onCreate preferences in your preference fragment compat. And now, whenever a user toggles the state of the preference, the summary will automatically be updated based on the constraints we defined. Now that we've built our more advanced hierarchy, I'm going to cover using separate hierarchies and separate screens. Oftentimes, you'll want to split up more complex hierarchies into separate screens, making sure that less important preferences aren't cluttering up your main screen and making it hard for the user to focus on the things they actually want to change. If you're already using the framework API and looking to migrate, there are some different ways you may have structured your separate screens. And if you're starting afresh with the Android X preference library, you may be wondering what the best way of handling this is. Um, but first, let's just recap how a single screen looks. Um, we have our activity at the top, which will internally wrap a fragment, which then contains its actual hierarchy. Um, we can kind of consider the fragment and the hierarchy to be a sort of a screen of settings. Um, so in reality, we just have an activity which loads a setting screen, which is this. And this works fine when we have one screen. Um, but what if our hierarchy looks something like this? Now, on our first screen, we have links to other screens. So the sync will link to a screen of sync-related preferences. And messages will link to some more specific messages-related preferences. Um, 
how does this look like with our architecture? Uh, it's actually very simple to what we've done previously with a single screen. The initial setting screen will just be, just as before, a preference fragment compat with a hierarchy. Um, and then the sync scanning screen will also be a preference fragment compat with its own hierarchy, and so on for any other screens you may have. All we need to do now, differently, is just to find a link between the sync preference object and the sync settings fragment. So whenever the user clicks on this preference, we will load the related screen. So we'll start off in this state, pointing to the initial settings screen. When the user taps a preference, now that we've already defined this link, we're just going to swap out the screen from underneath. And because we're still using preferences to act as the link, the initial settings hierarchy is going to be just as we've done before. So again, we start with the root preference screen tag, and we just have two basic preferences, um, one for syncing and one for messages. It's important, well, you may want to add an icon here to the start of the preference to provide some more context to the user, as we don't really have an important summary display here. Um, this is just done by defining a drawable with the icon attribute. So this will just be something in your res drawable directory. Um, and now the only thing left to do is just to find the links between the fragments. So to do this, we use the fragment attribute, and we just set the fully qualified class name of the fragment. If your fragment is nested inner class, you'll need to use the dollar sign to separate the outer class and the inner class. And that's it for the hierarchy. Um, the activity is very similar to what we have before. We just set the initial setting screen to be displayed. Um, the only difference here is that we should implement this method uh, on preference start fragment. This method is called when a user taps on a preference that has an associated fragment and allows you to customize any transitions or animations between fragments. There is a default implementation, so if you don't override this method, we will still handle it for you, but you won't have any nice transitions or animations that you may want. And the fragments are going to be exactly the same as before. Uh, again, all we need to do here is just override on create preferences and set the relevant XML resource. Um, and that's really it now. Whenever a user taps on the messages or the sync preference, the correspond fragment will be automatically displayed to the user. Uh, so to wrap some things up, um, we've recently released 1.1 Alpha 1. So please, if you haven't already, get it. Uh, try using dynamic summaries and other recent features. Um, please follow any bugs and feature requests to this component on issuetracker.google.com. We've recently updated the Android settings guide to make use of the Android X preference library. Um, please check it out for further information on some of the things I've talked about in this talk and some other features out of the scope of this talk. And we're working on template for Android Studio as well as public samples um, demonstrating this new library coming soon. For more information on Android Jetpack, you can go to developer.android.com slash jetpack. And thank you for listening. <laughs>